In this video, we are going to create the inventory list component, which is the component that is below the search inventory component. So when we type something and then click on the search button, we expect the inventories to be displayed right here below the search inventory component. That's what we are going to do in this video. So first of all, we are going to the controls folder and then we are going to create another reusable component. And I'm going to call it inventory list component. And because it's a reusable component, so we are not going to have a title. Here, we will first of all need to have a variable that is used to store the list of inventories. So here's inventory. I'm just going to call it list of inventories. Uh, if I do this, it's going to warn me because uh, this is uh, done at six. See this? So I'm going to just initialize it with a empty, uh, empty list. Now, I know I haven't populated yet, but once I have it, then I can render the UI element for the list of inventories. So before I actually load anything into this variable, I'm just going to create the UI element now. So here I can do a table, right? And we can use the table class, uh, CSS class for uh, from Bootstrap. And then we're gonna create a uh, table header. We are going to have a few columns, right? We are going to have uh, to see the name of the, the inventory. Uh, we wanna see the the quantity of the inventory and we want to see the price of the inventory and uh, you know at the last column we want to have a edit button although we're not going to work on the edit button but we want to make space for it that's why we have this empty column here we need to construct the T body and here this is the place we are going to use this variable we are going to loop through with the add for each sign. So now we're writing C sharp with this reader syntax, right? And we can just write C sharp per normal. So inventory in the list of inventories. Now I can choose to write everything in here like TR and then TD inventory inventory dot inventory name remember once we started writing the html elements we will have to use the at sign um, because the html element breaks the flow of c sharp right so i have to do an at sign here and then uh, quantity uh, we are going to say at sign again uh, and quantity and this one the next one will be the price and we are going to format the press to a currency format. And then the last one would be the button. Okay. And the button is going to be a button. And we are going to use bootstrap light button. And I'm going to format it like this. So we are keeping it like this. But later we will refactor the code and move this out of here to put it into a inventory list item component, right? I want to keep it here so that you can see the problem with having everything together. Now I can start putting this inventory list component in the inventory list page, but you will see nothing except the header of this HTML table. Therefore, we will need to be able to populate this list of inventories. How do we do that? We will need to have a search term that, that is passed into the inventory list component. Let's go to the inventory list and actually start putting it right here. Let's just put the inventory list component right here. All right, so we have the inventory list component but the search term that is read over here needs to be passed into the inventory list component, right? So that the inventory list component knows the search term and then it can load the list of inventories. 
So how do we pass that information into the inventory list component? It is through something that is called parameters, right? So in Blazor, the parameters is just a property. So let's go to inventory list and start creating the property. The type of that property is going to be the type that you want to pass in. Uh, in this case, it's the search term, so it has to be a string. And let's just call it search term. And now you won't be able to see that as a property over uh, inside this, right? So if we type a space, you can't see that search term. So in order to actually see it, uh, we will need to annotate it with parameter attribute. And again, we want to initialize it with empty so that it's never null. Then we go to inventory list component in the inventory list page. Then we can specify the search term. The search term will be the search term in here, but we will have to use at sign. Otherwise, uh, it would consider this as just a string, right? It's just the search term string. It wouldn't be a variable. So we can use the at sign here to specify that this search term is a variable. Then we can go back to the inventory list component. And over here, we can override a method that is called on parameters set. So this on parameters set method is a life cycle event of the component. It is triggered whenever the parameter is changed or when the component is just loaded and the parameter is set for the first time. Now, when this is called, we know that the search term is populated with something. It could be populated with empty. In the case that the inventory list is just initialized, everything is empty. But when it is empty, uh, we return everything. So now is the time we need to use the use case. And we have actually done that uh, in the past when we put it in the indexed page. Right, so we will need to dependency inject this use case into our inventory list component. Right, so we can go to the top and then we can say inject this use case and use case name is this. Uh, and then we can use this use case name to call the execute method. Well, this is a async method. Therefore, we are going to, instead of use on parameter set, we can use the on parameter set async. So I'm going to overwrite it again. We can see that there is this on parameter set async method. So I'm going to delete this one and use the async version, right? So we can go over here and we can call the async, execute async and we can pass in the search term like this and um, we are going to say list of inventories equals await right in order to await it we we should also make this a async method and now it's just complaining that this has to be a list right so we can just say to list and that's it. Again, this on parameter set is only triggered when the search term comes into this component. Once this is populated, the UI here will be re-rendered. Of course, it's only the part that is different will be re-rendered. This is something you need to remember that whenever this method is triggered, a part of the UI elements here will be re-rendered depending on which part is changed, right? Depending on uh, which variable is modified. Let's go to our uh, inventory list component here and double check that we have everything, right? So we have the search inventory component, which triggers this uh, on inventory search. Once the event callback event handler is triggered, the uh, front end is re-rendered. And when this is re-rendered, the information here, the search term, will be passed into uh, the inventory list component. And then 
the inventory list component on parameters set method will be triggered and therefore this is reloaded and the front end is re-rendered this part okay so let's give it a test all right so we have all of the inventories populated by default because at the beginning we are passing in a empty search term and that triggers the on parameter set right but if we want to filter uh, for example we want to find the body then we can click on the search button then it filters and if we want to see everything again we just delete it and click on the search button again and if we put something that doesn't actually exist it will show everything empty this is what i want to show you in this video